Welcome Transformer fans, my name is Composite Energo, and today's review is on the Transformers uh, Rise of the Beasts uh, Beast Weaponizer um, Scorponok, Deluxe Class Scorponok, and his little buddy Sandspear. So, a couple things I gotta specify. So this guy is part of, this guy is exclusive to the, the Target exclusive exclusivity of the buzzworthy bumblebee uh subline so yeah and this guy is based off of the uh those scorpions those scorpion uh that served under a unicron towards the end of the rise of the beast film so here he is in his scorpion mode and it looks pretty good um it's not it's not an exact model of it i feel like this might be based off of an earlier concept but yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I like the shading and the green on him. It looks very nice. Uh, let's get a close look at his buddy Sandspear. And this is referred to as a beast weaponizer. And essentially, what that means is that it, it's a deluxe class figure in the form of Scorponok that comes with a a transforming like smaller uh, figure that transforms into a weapon. So this is the actual weaponizer. And this is the main figure, which is roughly deluxe class size or warrior class, if you more would be, I guess, a little bit more uh, accurate. So yeah, so here he is. So this is Scorponok. And let's get to articulation since this is a beast mode. So the tail, which is really cool, has two ball joints: one there, and one there. And this is a ball joint, so it's pre so it does articulate, which is nice. Uh, legs don't move, and then the arms have ball joint there and ball joint at the elbow they have a nice detailing here and that's pretty much it at least with the beast mode in terms of articulation uh sand spear here is pretty interesting has ball joints here as you can see has ball joints here on his claws which is pretty cool he gets a little more motion than you that you would expect very detailed very nice nice little stinger tail very cool and I guess the tail can move a little, but that's more for transformation. So, Scorponok. Now, before I get into transformation, one thing I want to point out, and this is a little detail, I don't know if this is intentional. If you look at the back of his head, of his scorpion head, you see this little design here? That, if, like, if this is supposed to be a reference, this, like, this resembles the turbine design that is was on the original a movie version of Scorponok, the original movie Scorponok, who would transform basically into an engine, which we never saw in toy form or in the film, but he would turn into an engine. And he had this tur and he had the turbine design, which was a an actual gimmick on the original figure, which would turn when you would roll him. And he has the molding here that kind of resembles that. So if, if like if this is intentional, I feel that that might be a callback to him. Because I don't think that the actual Scorponox that appeared in the film uh, actually had that design on them. Or if they did, it's like it's one of the, it's like it's very difficult to see. So enough with that. Let's get on with the transformation. So first things first, you pop off the tail, straighten out, and this will become his weapon in robot mode. So let's just have it there on top of Sandspear. So now transformation, pretty straightforward. Lift up, out. Split the legs, bring down the arms, fold this back, rotate the head, lift up the shoulders, and then just straighten out the fists. And then as a little bonus, which I do because they have this hinge, even though the legs, even though the, the scorpion legs don't move in, in scorpion mode, in beast mode, I mean. I also suggest you, you tilt these back to get like a better heel for more stability and to kind of streamline the look. And there we have Scorbonok in his robot mode. And then his accessory, you just plug it into his hand. Like so. And there we go. Cool weapon. And then on top of that, since he comes with Sand Spear, let's transform him. Now for him, the, I think there's like a the official ways to have the arms folded up like this. I don't particularly like that. So what I do instead is that I fold them down into the uh cr into the to the empty space that's there 
So fold this down, flip up. Well, I guess before that, make sure you flip this up. Have the things either down into the crevice like so. Fold out the tail and fold out his blade. And here we have the, I guess you could call this, since his name is Sand Spear, you can say this is the spear mode or the blade mode of a Sand Spear. And then he can just hold it in any arm. Or what I like to do, which I think is also kind of neat, is fold it down, just plug it into the forearm and fold it down. And now he has a, an actual spear, which I think makes a little more sense. Spear and a shield, I'd like to think. So there we go. I think that looks pretty cool. So now let's get Sand Spear off and change him back really quick. There we go. Now he's back to normal, so let's put him there on the side. So now let's get to articulation, which he has quite a bit, like more than you, more than you think. So let's get a look at this head sculpt, and very nice head sculpt. Very cool. As you can see, the head is on a uh, ball joint. Well, not on a ball joint. When I say it's a, it can swivel left and right, or swivel full 360, as you can see. Uh, elbow is on a ball joint. So there's the shoulder, shoulder flaps, soldier, shoulder flaps can move up and down. Elbow is also on a ball joint. It's the same as basically his uh, uh, scorpion mode. But now his legs are revealed. So he has a ball joint there. Wide range of movement. And another ball joint here at the knee with a pretty good bend. With a very nice bend. Actually, he has a double bend. I didn't notice this. So yeah, he has a double bend at the knee. He has an actual hinge on top of the ball joint. So yeah, he has very nice knee bend there. Knee articulation. Very cool. And he has a lot of like a uh, five millimeter ports and whatnot. So you can put accessories in there, which is always appreciated. And he has a nice little Predacon logo on here. So yeah, so that is his articulation, which he has a pretty decent amount. So now let's get to size comparison. So here we have Ratchet. And I think this really shows that he's actually very, fairly close to deluxe size. So he's roughly deluxe class. Or Warrior would be a little more accurate. Here we have, let's put Scorpion off to the side, Primal. And then Cliff Jumper to finish it off. All right. So now let's get into some more interesting little facts about Scorponok here. So this Scorponok is based off of the Scorpion drones that appear at the end of the film in the final battle of Rise of the Beasts, which are... Uh, we don't know if they actually are Predacons. This guy is referred to as a Predacon, and he has the symbol, the insignia. But we don't know, at least from the film, if these guys used to be Predacons that just became under the control of Unicron, or if it's just the figure they just, or if this figure they decided just to put it on there just to give him some kind of allegiance. Because it's weird they didn't make him a Terracon, because that would make a little more sense. Because in the film, I think they just wore Terracons. So, I guess my headcanon would be that this is the Scorponok that all of the other Scorponoks are based off. That all of those Scorponoks that were under Unicron's uh, control, those Terracons, were just copies of this Scorponok. That's what I like to think anyway, that this is the original Scorponok with his little buddy Sandspear. Which is also a Predacon, by the way, I looked that up, apparently he is. And this was the original Predacon that was then used as the basis for the other, the drones that you, that are under, that are part of Unicron's army. That's my headcanon anyway. That's not like confirmed or anything. Just a little idea. And I guess another fun, another fun fact I found out about this, this head sculpt apparently comes from two swords. It's actually based off of something. I was really surprised when I did a little research on them. So this head sculpt is, is apparently based off of the, well, from one of two possible sources. This is based off of the Revenge of the Fallen de Deluxe Class Dead End figure, which was, I remember, was like a, a repaint and slight mold. I actually have it. A repaint and slight remold of the, what was it? Oh, what was it? It was the, um... 
uh, Sideways. Yeah, the original Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe Class Sideways. Excuse me, that was a repaint of that figure. That's where this head is from. But apparently, this is this also might be closer to a custom, a fan-made custom Scorponok figure that utilized that head sculpt and put it on a, on a movie one Scorponok body. And it was like a custom figure. And apparently that's where this head sculpt is from. And I think that's very neat. And yeah, uh, I guess closing thoughts. Overall, this is a pretty cool figure. I'm kind of I'm kind of like surprised that this was exclusive to just Target. Because usually a lot of these like store exclusives are like just random repaints and whatnot. But this is a full-on just figure. It's not a repaint of anything. This is an original figure of a character that does, I guess, technically appear in the movie. That's just exclusive to one store. I mean, now that I think about it, they have done that before. There was the um, uh, the one that comes to mind is Brainstorm, who was a Walgreens exclusive during Titan's Return. And I just, re yeah, that's that's right. That was a thing. But yeah, other than that, overall, it's a pretty solid figure. Uh, these little beasts, um, these Beast Alliance figures, Beast Alliance. That's what it's called, not Beast Weaponizer. Oh boy, yeah, you can can you tell that I'm a bit um out of it? <laughs> so yeah, this is a beast weaponizer, and this pairing is referred to as a beast alliance. So this is the Scorponok beast alliance. Okay, so yeah, overall pretty solid figure. Like like the little like sand spear that he turns into. Oh, and another little bonus thing I noticed. Um, as you can see, sand spear has little uh kill has his doesn't have like traditional claws so to speak. He actually has little ports in here. And if you're wondering, yes, they are 5 millimeters. So if you happen to have a little, you know, weapon. Um, yeah, he can hold them. He, he can, he can hold. Let's, uh, let's try him this out. So yeah, if you, if <laughs> this is another, I guess, little bonus, bonus factoid that I, I personally really like. Is that uh, Sand Spear? His hands do have five millimeter ports, so you can have him hold other weapons, which is really neat. So yeah, uh, this has been my review of the Transformers: uh, Rise of the Beast, Buzzworthy Bumblebee, Beast Alliance, Scorponok, and Sand Spear. I'm just gonna shorten all of that into calling it the Rise of the Beast, the uh, Buzzworthy Bumblebee, the Lux Class, Scorponok. And Sandspear. Uh, I'll probably just abbreviate it to ROTB, Rise of the... Yeah, to ROTB, just to simplify things. Because I do got to mention this is Buzzworthy Bumblebee, because he really is exclusive to that. So yeah, this is a Composite Energos signing off. Whoops. Signing off. Peace out, and be safe.